Well, uh, we can get started three seconds ahead of time, then we won't run ready. My name is Norbert Kienert. I will actually present the first part of our lecture, a brief introduction to what we understand under uh, the platform and the Mac concept and how we uh, thrive on it and live it. And then uh, Tobias Denninger will actually go live with the system to give you a feel for uh, such a solution. Uh, by coincidence, last week I uh, received this video in a magazine on uh, the topic of the future of production, VDMA magazine. And they say that uh, digital platforms can improve the value chain. And they say that AI uh, increases productivity and customer loyalty. Well, well, uh, the VDMA. And even the Harvard Business uh, Magazine in its uh, February issue on the topic of no-code, low-code um, wrote a little feature on this. The, even they deal with such topics um, that actually keep us busy. Well, again, I will actually describe the points of departure or where we get our knowledge from in product information, media, asset management and e-commerce. I will talk about the Mac principles. You've probably heard about these before. Who, who has heard about Mac? Yes, yes, four people. Hmm, great. You should understand this concept because uh, this is what the beauty of a software all about. And um, it uh, influences not only a better hosting or better interaction with third party systems. No, it also means that we can actually approach concepts in a completely different way. And the three bottom points view on product data and product strategies such as pro e procurement will be touched upon, e class and AI workspace. Uh, we will see that live. Where uh, does Noxum come from? We look back on 27 years of experience in the SME and large company environment in Dach, Coca uh, Roberts, uh, Porsche, Audi, many resounding names, but uh, ETS tool technology, but also Jura coffee machines, uh, which also have very complex uh, processes that they wanted to solve. And um, uh, th th this was a standard product, then customized, uh, usually run on premise um, because customers wanted it for safety reasons. And over the years, uh, we had industry 4.0 IoT projects, and uh, this information had to be moved somehow, the information that is needed to take decisions. In this uh, bottom area, in the green box, we had classical manufacturers uh, who wanted uh, or do omnichannel publishing. E-TIM, E-Class standards are required here. And when we look at uh, the customer, um, Stefano Warentes, a publishing house with 300 people who have to run all of their business on one platform because they have million of users that they serve and still have to run their print operations in parallel, you can imagine how much technology is needed. Stable world that we make our money with. And then we took the decision when the first cloud systems were available that we would have to uh, uh, take it to the next level and would have to build a new product world, an additional uh, uh, world. Well, our world is characterized by standards, standardization um, through uh, specs. And our world is characterized that we always have highly um, professional translation service in the center of things. Uh, SDL Trados, for instance, or SDL class, E class, they were always center stage for our work, for our customers. And cooperation with associations to co shape these standards to be able to use them at an early stage. When you look at the timeline, when we entered the market and how the world has changed, AWS was an important uh, stage, uh, Amazon Cloud or Azure uh, Cloud all, all of a sudden available, or that offer services that we can book in addition and use in addition. 
and uh, this allowed us to host services that we could later sell. Over time, Contentful was one of the first big icebreakers and new concepts cropped up that actually used the, used the cloud tools uh, more often and they developed their own applications on top of these and around 2019 2020 the mac alliance said we will actually put this into a manifesto we uh, want to uh, develop an, an application uh, that is as scalable as we needed to build business systems Around that time, uh, NovaDB, our product, was launched based on uh, this uh, Mac Alliance, the Mac Alliance specifications. This is what I'm going to cover now. What we say today is that we fill the Mac concept. We are today no code, low code, and pro code organized. For most projects, we have a 75% of no code. One person can configure such a system without ever talking to a developer. The business consultant outside can build a Kanban board within a workshop um, the, uh, um, and show customers functionalities that uh, the customer had to describe cognitively, who is aware of the workflow uh, diagrams in the no-code or low-code world. This is easy to build and show. And then add some visualizations, some preview layers in the low-code area and uh, systems between grid systems that you have to trigger. And what we specifically did uh, were the application packages that uh, actually create the part of departure for PIN projects or an E-class project or whether it's a MAM project. So you have the product extend, it's Kanban boards, product structures that are available. But this uh, also shows uh, processes, translation processes that are designed that are available within 10 minutes when you start such a project. Uh, the Mac concept uh, uh, comprises four elements, uh, M, microservices, we, we no longer have the monolithic uh, element, we have, we dissolve this monolith and uh, we opt for microservices. The big benefit is that uh, such a microservice can be replaced when a new one is launched. Or you can also develop microservices service that organize the connectivity between systems. When you have an ERP and new products are to be generated in the ERP system and overnight the system, um, uh, 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 nobody be is to take over these systems and introduce uh, to the workflow or embed it in the Kanban board or assign it to a role, a person, or nobody be uh, can trigger these processes uh, by sending notifications. And this is all done via these interfaces. API first is one of the points that uh, 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 save most costs for the customers and also human resources in projects because uh, we've designed it as a, on a sales service basis. So we don't want to, uh, we enable the customer or his architecture to obtain the data from the system or upload new data into the system. And we save the manpower, the person that is tied to this project. This uh, brings down costs uh, for the customer and uh, makes it more efficient because uh, the customer can work with it and uh, his or her agency. For headless is the next, um, as in H, and many will think it's uh, the black box like the InDesign server that needs uh, templates. Headless means that we decouple front end and back end, but the most important part is uh, that such a headless system should be controlled by third party systems, SAP or an MIS system. And through the AP, it controls uh, our headless uh, CMS remotely. So the results are the same. The Kanban board is uh, filled, the tasks are there without having to do anything because the service via the API controlling the headless system can actually generate new workflows, etc. Such cloud native is, of course, important for horizontal or vertical scalability, just the way you need it. 
So uh, since 2009, we started doing this, uh, started with AWS and then switched over to Microsoft Azure because uh, they are uh, they clarified at a very early stage the legal backgrounds and most of our customers know the Microsoft World through Teams and uh, Microsoft 365. And this is uh, why they already concluded contracts accordingly. Well, um, what does it do for us? Well, um, we can approach concepts completely or projects completely differently. The time to value is shorter. I can produce results a lot faster for our customers. A little example. A customer that we would have not serviced three or four uh, years ago, 60 people, um, they approached us out of necessity. We said, they said in five to six weeks, we want to save the products in the new shop and it doesn't work with our ERP data. What can we do? And we said, Okay, we will send you three videos. You watch the import possibilities. You look at the interfaces. You uh, watch the uh, InDesign coupling. And then you can tell us, is this a tool for you? Then we will do a proof of concept. And after the customer had this, uh, went through the short demo, fantastic, let's have a pilot. We have to continue. And within three weeks, we, can crea we created his PIM system. It was 400 product data in this particular case for uh, the web shop. And um, they were able to train the uh, agency. The agency um, took or retrieved the data and we could uh, see to other things. We want to enable as many people as possible. Uh, we don't like Excel, but um, the Excel spreadsheets could be imported and uh, the customer can later continue using the ERP interface. What does such a platform deliver? The Nova DB platform. Well, it provides a basis that creates the UI, um, job certification, uh, authentication. Um, this is done by the platform. And it also supplies the interface relations for Swagger. Or in thinking in technical terms, uh, where developers can read immediately um, what data is available and who holds the rights to this data and what can be uh, safe, what can be uh, uploaded and what can be retrieved. And this is why we have the self-service uh, um, uh, APIs, the REST APIs, reading and writing. And then there's also a delivery API when you need highly performance systems and they can actually deliver masses of data, a thousand products with 200 uh, characteristics plus graphics in two seconds. This is the cloud possibility with which we actually export the data in an orchestrated fashion. Well, then there are of course application packages. We will see four of them a little later uh, for PIM and MAM that we simply save in the system. And they are the points of departure for the projects uh, that the customers have planned. When they have a MAM, they don't need ours. Then they simply save the data and use our PIM. Um, and then if uh, the customer needs a K AI uh, process, then this is available as a package and can actually be used for both PIM and MAM because they are linked on the same platform. So if uh, I need a process for images, for instance, then uh, it will use the same AI interface as um, for uh, text generation because they're linked on the same platform and all of the results uh, are available at the interfaces right away, which saves costs yet again. These application packages um, and uh, we need, if we need special visualization, then uh, low code comes into play. And Mr. Deniger will show uh, where little programming jobs are still to be performed. All in all, this saves labor at the customers. Uh, um, they can use their people more efficiently. They achieve results uh, faster. We save uh, human resources because we also have to be efficient and um, the time to value is shorter. And additionally, we're saving costs. So uh, we reduce human resources needs and we reduce the time to 
market. These are the application packages, the product information management, the media asset management and um, E-Class. I think you also brought a little example for this one and the AI GPT workspace. These are all packages that we upload uh, via a click. They are available and can then be customized on a click um, interface. We can uh, develop such application packages, our partners can develop them, but the customers can also develop them themselves because uh, whatever you configure on this platform can be saved and reused. Well, a brief uh, chart on connectors. We are at a Print Comet event here. And Print Comet has also used our interface, and, and within two days uh, the system was ready to go. And this is now uh, that we can exchange data between their system and our system. We just uh, provided a short training, and then the Print Comet colleagues uh, could work independently. Um, important is the connection with Office uh, 365 because we want to use the authentication to access uh, the system and exchange data or to retrieve data from the system. A product manager um, says, I need an Excel spreadsheet. This is done via the uh, uh, Office uh, 365 interface. If a need be, uh, the um, a product uh, 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 employee can also uh, upload it. Power BI for classic uh, BI views. This interface is also already existent and editive uh, directory in design Adobe both with the format that we render and with the plugin that we've developed. So we can also uh, save data or upload data into InDesign then the REST API etc. So Mr. Denninger will show how this now works all together and how we actually um, use PIM data mixed with marketing data and how we can visualize this data uh, from the PXM area to enrich data, to actually uh, include um, customer reviews, for instance, then group-specific content development for PXM concepts, because they're often um, outside the PIM area. They need uh, this data um, by the PXM uh, concept, the e-commerce solution, to trigger or target a specific t uh, customers. And this is also easy to do via the interfaces. So we can also retrieve um, real data from third-party systems. And we uh, can generate views so that the product um, data manager can actually or maintainer can see whether um, some data is still missing and um, a link to this is the AI um, system no programming for us it's just the upload of the application package plus uh, the Kanban boards uh, uh, to actually handle it in process terms but now I hand over to you well thank you very much and if there are any questions you're welcome we we'll try to stick to our time slot if possible. Oh, we changed over to the browser because NovaDB as a service needs Firefox and we can see the dashboard of NovaDB. This is the first view that you or your employee would get. As uh, Mr. Keenat said, in this ins instance, we've uploaded several application packages, the PIM tile, the asset management uh, tile above, and administration and configuration tiles. To, uh, I will look into our PIM system first and I click on the uh, PIM tile within NovaDB. Such tiles always look the same. The objects uh, or entities at the top, at the bottom structures and at the uh, bottom the Kanban boards where various workflows are shown. Let's have a closer look. Um, we selected uh, or maintained six uh, um, sample products. This is all by FES tools. There is the um, cordless drill 
the power drill, all entities are broken down into forms. Important to note that everything included in the forms of the form itself is configuration work. Nobody has programmed anything. N nobody B creates this all on the click um, interface. UI. And uh, this is how you can create uh, little forms that you need for your workflow. This is also an E-class form in the system. We can also display E-class and, and actually process it further for BME cut. On the right hand side, we have the preview or report part. Here I can actually uh, select various views. We have a shop product uh, view and the, the maintainer can immediately see what the product would look like in the shop. The, this is the low code part. At this point you could actually invest a lot more uh, work and actually generate PDFs from that point by adding a header or uh, actually adapting the layout. And on the right hand side, we have a, a toolbox, which is very uh, relevant to the E-class segment because as a maintainer, data maintainer, I know exactly where I need to maintain what. And these um, specs are actually generated by E-class. We have not actually uh, conjured them up. Then at each point in time, I can see what was changed uh, about the entity. I can look at the use where this entity is being currently used and at the same time I can also trigger discussions and link employees. Linked employees would uh, then uh, receive notifications in the top right corner under the links. So they're so-called deep links so regardless of where the employee is in the system as soon as he or she clicks on it uh, they will actually be taken to the place where they're needed. Yeah, can I briefly interrupt? Um, um, you said E-class here in the middle. This was actually selected. The E-class packages were selected by the customer through this click UI. This is a 10 minute job. And from that minute, um, you've got the E-class functionality available. And then I can uh, start uh, mapping my internal classification to the E-class uh, classification. And um, the BME cut publisher is also included in this package. And then the BME E-cut uh, publisher can be organized as well. And the export is automatic. This is very fast. The system uh, actually uses tested versions so you don't invest or lose any time on testing. At this point for this role it is important to view this uh, item or another role will only see that index card because this is their job. So uh, this uh, this UI is uh, uh, this uh, interface is, is very role based and rules based. So you save a lot of time for testing with these application packages because they have already been created by NovaDB and you uh, there were just jobs assigned to them. Okay, yeah, exactly. In order to uh, show you what we've done with AI, I would refer to another NovaDB feature, and this is our work packages. For the technicians uh, among us, it's uh, like a branch, so it's branch enabled our NovaDB. And um, in grade, we've uh, seen an area where we created a new open AI branch. And as you can see, all of a sudden we've received two new forms, AI input and AI output. And these forms now work with the same data set, but they are um, uh, actually separated from the uh, default branch, so I can't destroy anything uh, when I print out. The classic example is uh, when you are a t-shirt manufacturer and you're currently working on the winter catalog, whereas the colleagues are already preparing the summer catalog and the t-shirts have a different price and a different color, then you can actually do it in a separate branch and as soon as the summer collection um, is ready you can ac actually trigger it and then you can continue working with this branch. There's a question. This branch refers to both the programming and the data. Yes. The branch is always an extension or a change and when I'm happy with the status, the condition, uh, then I can merge it into my uh, default. 
uh, when there's service calls, for instance, we can even say see who was the maintainer who changed or introduced changes so that we can actually provide the respective uh, support. So both the data and for the configuration. So various versions of the data can be seen for the t-shirts, for instance, um, because this refers to various databases because uh, the new products and new prices are required. No, you don't need a new database. It's the same database. You just add a new layer. You say what has changed, five new products, five new prices, and then you've got a, a, a guided conversation or dialogue, and you want to say, I want to merge it with my um, uh, status in InDesign or in the web shop. And then you say the following 15 um, changes will be accepted, and these two will be denied because they need to be checked. Exactly. These two new forms uh, are, have been configured now. Our consultants have uh, played around with this input form. It's not really looking nice. Uh, um, it is that the editors need to draw up a long text and in the AI output form, then actually works with the AI and to produce a summary. The AI can also filter keywords and uh, do a classification. And this can be triggered by jobs uh, in our um, system. Then we created a new open, eye, uh, open AI integration. Based on the text, I can have further text generated. I can actually even select a writing style or I can actually select a language. And I can even add further aspects such as uh, the text should be designed for Amazon or for a web shop, for instance and um, I can have new texts generated and uh, t uh, take them over uh, for my product. Uh, the uh, application package actually hands over uh, this information to the selected AI concept and then actually transports it into another form and actually reflected in the uh, documentation the way we know it from uh, GPT. And all of the process steps, uh, if you want to generate images uh, based on buzzwords, there are many creative possibilities using DaVinci, for instance. The ability is there in the application package. Um, the filling of text boxes is uh, available and now you can start to build your processes. And there it is important, the nicest AI is, is useless because we want to have a guided process. We want to include our own text information. So the, the AI can actually research on a global scale, but when you have a corporate language, you want to make sure that the AI uses uh, the own corporate uh, language uh, and then actually uploads uh, the text from the corporate Azure cloud. And also important, uh, this is not done by a single person. Uh, one actually prepares the text, um, runs it through the AI, then um, the next step arrives with the Kanban board. No, no problem. Yeah, I can do that. And then uh, the workflow looks correspondingly. And there are Kanban boards that uh, react immediately by um, actually displacing a tile the AI has delivered. Then the tile changes in position, probably gets a prioritization. And then you can actually define your workflows for your AI processes, of course, uh, um, in coordination with the technology providers. But you have a basis for drawing up the texts. So this is this game is fun. Um, this uh, presentation text, for instance, uh, was drawn up with marketing in twenty five minutes. Headline plus text uh, uh, usually uh, lasts a little longer, but we said let's try it with AI, and it worked out well. And this is now featured in the Print Commit uh, conference. Uh, uh, document and it was uh, uh, developed 75% by AI. But the process is available. 
you can say uh, there's a two-stage process, a three-stage process. Once you've actually finished the German text first and then actually send it to translation, that you then later uh, uh, green light. And this is all uh, done by, prompted by jobs and triggers. To show you, I know that there's somebody in the audience uh, who codes himself. L entering the uh, configuration, looking at the job definition, uh, summary AI. And then you can see that Nova DB is not a black box. Um, at this point, I can actually uh, look at the uh, summary AI job and I can specify, um, but for the temperature, for instance, you can influence the AI. Uh, as to the uh, p possible f degrees of freedom. Um, I could, uh, for instance, enter, summarize the following text in one paragraph, two, three, or four paragraphs. And you don't need any programming for this. So this is the admin area that the regular user doesn't see because they are supposed to follow the corporate uh, specifications. And the same applies to the visualizations. We're using a technology here that is JavaScript based and NovaDB is supported by it. This is the visualization. We had the uh, web shop view before. Here you can see uh, this was changed. And this is for the low code area. I use the source code and the source code then generates the visualization on the right hand side. This is done by our customers uh, because they, they know Java and SQL and then they can actually render their own previews. We often uh, prompt it, but um, we enable customers to cooperate and many uh, customer projects um, actually include this as a requirement. Uh, the quick views. Yeah, we're doing fine for time. This is the shop view, for instance, where information can hail from a third party system. Then the customer reviews can be um, embedded uh, personally, but it also can come from the shop system. Five stars, for instance, uh, in the live process, uh, it can actually be included via the interface. So I can always allow um, the data maintainer to understand what's going on out there, uh, which comments were made and uh, whether there are any possibilities uh, to see what, how many stars the product uh, received. In this view, you can also see what interested the customer or the shopper, the shopper board, what we know this feature from Amazon. Um, here we see this product matches this product. Please offer the two uh, in a cross-selling approach. So let's switch off to the other view. And these views are very easy to implement. This is a product view. This looks differently where I'll work with uh, uh, performance characteristics and with uh, performance index cards uh, where I actually list the technical data. But uh, this is just uh, database uh, queries. And last but not least, maybe the quality assurance topics. This is important for our customers. They want to know, can I publish this product this way? And with the same technology, they, we can tell our customers uh, there are enough videos. Is the English uh, market cater to with the English translation? And you can explicitly look up whether there is an uh, SAP price or an ERP price. Have they been uploaded already? Well, I think we're doing fine, well for time, looking to the audience now. Are there any questions? Yes, you wanted to cover the Mac. Uh, uh, how This is the MAM module, how this is structured. The background for MAM is that uh, we have offered many MAM systems for major customers. The MAM systems were introduced by one department and didn't have the structure for doing e-commerce. 
there were always two projects um, in the mum and we said if a customer has a uh, mum that he wants to replace or has a mum that is not uh, suitable for this uh, objective then um, he can actually make it available to us and we can work with it and uh, we actually know all of the validation system but we would never say that we're better than Xelob they're so perfect they're so good at what they're doing performance issues yes but uh, when you don't have such a highly relevant mum we can start with this until the customer has taken a selection or they say this is enough for our work again time to value we can uh, produce uh, results quickly and then later use the interface to attach and link the selected mum system any other questions yes please uh, can you I process images in this MAM system? No, we do this through the efference with Adobe projects there, coupled or cloud services, videos, for instance. Um, the export of videos is also done uh, through cloud services at Audi, the whole video production, the banners, uh, language exchange. This is sent, assigned to the video asset in, in an Excel spreadsheet um, and everybody knows what should be in which frame, frame. And then the cloud system renders an adaptive video for the end channels, for the terminal devices. This is no, no longer done in-house. You could do it, but uh, it's not worthwhile. There are tools offering this, but we're not saying this. Maintaining is important, and then you simply select the, the microservice that best fits your needs. Oh yes, we could take a closer look. We've not uh, started uh, three years ago. Uh, we've been in the market for 26 years and simply learned in major projects, and uh, we don't want to take a market away from the mum providers. We have an interface to link it to. Uh, but very often we have uh, we don't have a mem that fits the process, and then of course we can help out.